just some odd stuff, man. And, and you know, I grew up at a, in a very religious household. Uh, the baby of four older brothers, so it's five of us. And, uh, you know, I grew up in the church, and my mom was really a religious woman. She didn't allow for any what they call worldly music in the house. And my brother's oldest brother, Eugene and little Jimmy, they would be playing like Hendrix, Albert King, Muddy Waters, John Lee Hooker, Eric Johnson, Stevie Ray, Cream, Fog Hat, Blue Cheer, Molly Hatchet, you know, Wes Montgomery, Kenny Burrell, King's X, uh, everybody that you can think of. It was, I was, you know, listening at it at age four years old because that's what they were playing around the house. You know, and I actually started on drums at three, and I, I, my brothers and them had a, some guitars around, and a lot of people asked, was it placed in your hands that way? Because my brothers played the exact same way that I do, left-handed and upside down. One of my brothers who's dead, I actually have two brothers that's dead, but little Jimmy King, he got adopted as Albert King's godson. He was a true left-handed person. He wrote left-handed but, and also played this way. Me and my oldest brother, Eugene, who's been pretty much my mentor my whole life, and, you know, mentored me on the what's and what nots and the do's and don'ts of guitar, period, uh, was very instrumental in turning me on to different influences and learning me about tone, which leads to why I'm holding what I'm holding right now and making the decision that I like this particular guitar because, you know, tone is just as important as playing. And they're, they kind of coincide with each other. So this story kind of leads up to me, you know, being around a very, very uh, music-oriented household and when my mom would leave to go to church on Sunday, that would be when my brother would play, have the opportunity to play all the rock and roll because that's the only time that he knew he could get away with it. And if mom was at home, she would be like, cut that off. I don't want to hear that. So while she was gone, he would crank it up. And that would be my introduction to all these older people that was way before my time that I was, uh, uh, you know, being, a, uh, being introduced to. So... Uh, at like 11 years old, which was my first gig that I ever played, uh, uh, from the four years old that I started, and, and you know, coming up through my woodshed years, which lasted for a long time, that um, brings me to another point of I'm always asked, how do I practice, or what do I use, or this and this and that, and the best answer that I can give them, man, is I pick up an instrument uh, most of the time when I... Am truly am, when I am truly inspired by somebody, I'll go listen to, like, say, Eric Johnson or, or Robert Randolph or Stevie Ray or uh, Joe Bonamassa or John Mayer or something like that and be highly influenced so much so that I want to go straight home, pick my guitar up, and play for 48, 72 hours straight, not want to eat, use the bathroom, sleep, nothing like that. And earlier in years before all of this iPod and recording uh, utensils came out, I didn't have anything. I didn't know that, you know, I could record or have something to reflect on. So when I would go and go through the actual trouble of, you know, being satisfied at the end of the day that I took the time out to wear this tape player out, rewinding it comfortably to try to figure out this pentatonic riff that I just heard. I didn't know it was pentatonic. That was the name of it at the time, but I just knew I liked how it sounded. And I'd figure it out. There was no tablature for us, me back then. You know what I'm saying? There was no, you know... If you were caught playing the way that I played back in the days of Berkeley, you were straight kicked out and told to turn the other way. So for me, fortunately, I'm glad the way that I came up learning how to play was how I learned how to play. Because by the time I learned it was the wrong way, it was too late. So to me, it's the right way. Uh, and um, I forgot what I was talking about just a second ago. It was in relation to... Um, my brother actually playing the different music and I played a gig at 11 years old and I'd go in the music store and stuff like that and people would be like, how do you know who Robert Trow is, man? You're 11 years old. You were born in when? I'm like, man, is who my brother was letting me listen to. You know, all of these earlier cats way before me, plus me listening at the music of my era at that time, was all being put into a big pot of gumbo. Huge pot of gumbo that I'll take a scoop of and ain't no telling what might come up. You know what I mean? That's the best way that I know to describe how I'm thinking when I go into something. It could be just some John McLaughlin or uh, some, some, it don't matter, some Alan Hallsworth or it just some, just, you know, it doesn't matter. So, I, I mean, I can't tell you where I'm picking from. It's just how I'm feeling and wherever the boat is landing is what's being attached on to what's going on. So, uh... You know, that just led into me, you know, creating an, uh, a name and got to, you know, get recognition from like 15 different record labels at the age of 15 years old and signed the first record deal. 
at 15, we winded it down to Electra and we wound up going with them. And the record came out when I was 16 and I was going to school or doing this year and touring in the summer and in the marching band and staying after school to four o'clock and going to the studio to record a record, not going home and go straight to school. And that was my schedule. And, you know, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. It led to a whole lot of great things. And it also led to me having to learn some things in life that, you know, I don't regret those either because it's got me to the point of being the mature person that I am today, knowing that the stepping stones that I went through was only more to help me in what I'm going through right now.